Just last Friday, we commenced the vaccination of students ages 12 to 18 years across our public and primary schools. As of yesterday evening, we had reached a total of 2,100 students out of a total of approximately 21,000 students across both public and private schools. At the moment, we have approximately seven centers operating daily for students, and we've been witnessing a steady flow of parents and students to these centers to allow the children to be vaccinated. I want to thank all those who've been participating in the program to date, as well as those persons who've been working at the various centers to facilitate our children, especially our special needs children, to be able to be vaccinated. Let me remind you at this point that there are a number of centers that will be opened up in the coming week to facilitate easier access for parents being able to take their children to the various sites. You can also listen out to updates on the Government Information Services website and Instagram pages, as well as on the Ministry of Education's pages for further updates in relation to when those centers will be in your community. As we approach the start of the new school's term on the September 20th, we've been having internal discussions with the Ministry of Education staff. We've been speaking with our parent teachers associations, the respective trade unions. I've also been having discussions at the level of the COVID subcommittee. And we've also been in discussions with the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And we're concerned about the rising number of cases, uh, particularly amongst our young people. We're hearing it is at younger ages that people are being affected, but in particular we're concerned about the number of cases that we're seeing um, confronting the country in relation to our children. The Delta variant, as I think you know, is quite a transmissible virus, and as such, um, we now have, I think, over 100 students in um, isolation across the various sites. In the past few days, we've had to um, set up the Blackman and Gollop School as an isolation facility. And I know that there are some who believe that we shouldn't be using the schools, but the truth of the matter is that this facility has been able to serve the Ministry of Health and Wellness well in the past. Um, we've been able to hand it back over to the, the school at the appropriate time. And I think the situation now warrants that we're able to provide additional facilities for the Ministry of Health and Wellness in order to be able to get a ahead of this particular virus. There may be other sites in the coming weeks that may have to be used. Some of our schools may have to be used. Um, it is not a measure of first resort, but the truth of the matter is that many of our schools have in fact been upgraded and the bathroom facilities and the showers um, lend itself to being able to be considered as an adequate facility to be able to house persons who may be sick. As a consequence, we believe, and, and after discussions this morning with the various representatives of the trade union movement, as well as the PTAs, we believe that the time has now come for us as we approach the start of the September term to go fully online. And therefore, I want to announce that all classes will begin for both students at the public and private schools on the 20th of September, but they will now be fully online. Now, I'm mindful that a number of um, concerns were raised on the last occasion in relation to the transition to online. We know it is not an easy environment to operate in. I mean, from the ministries, and we've done our best to try to equip our teachers to help them to make the transition. We know that it's not easy on parents as well because of the challenges that we have trying to um, get children to concentrate in the home environment. But what we have undertaken over the past few months is to provide devices to our students to be able to enable them to at least access the um, online environment and to be able to engage with their classmates and certainly their teachers in the online um, environment. Now, over the course of the next week or so, where we've been asking the information technology coordinators at each of the schools to work with our parents um, to ensure that devices which students may have had that may require um, any checks or checks for viruses, that they're able to set an appointment with the ITC to be able to either change out or to fix those devices. The other thing is that there may be some students who um, didn't need a device before, but for one reason or the other now require the access to a device and we are prepared to obviously accommodate those students. I would urge those um, parents whose students have left school 
to obviously return those devices um, because they will be to the benefit of those who perhaps may require one at this point in time because many students especially at the secondary level would have moved on and therefore we need to ensure that those students who are coming up are provided with the necessary devices but simply I don't want any student to have to start this school term without the use of a device. It is important that we allow our students to have um, the opportunity to be able to get online. And so I encourage parents and guardians not to wait until the beginning of the term to declare that you don't have a device for your child. If there are neighbors who can perhaps even reach out and, and let us know whether students have devices so that we can certainly accommodate. And as well, um, you know, ensure that you're talking with the teachers to try to find out when the devices will actually be available and when the dates and times are um, being set by the ITCs for the receipt of those devices from the students who, who have them. During the course of the coming week, it is my intention that we will have a more full, of, full of briefing for the public in relation to the rollout of the school term. Um, as you can appreciate, we are mindful that um, as we go into this term online, with all of the stresses that both parents and teachers and students have been engaging in over the course of the last year and a half, that it is important that we focus on mental health and wellness. And therefore, I am pleased to say that the Mental Health and Wellness Committee, which was established a few months ago, has been up and running. Um, the senior psychologist Wanita Brathwick Warren in my ministry has been working and heading that team and they've been working together with the guidance counselors, they've been working with the social workers, they've been working with the primary school counselors and they've been working with our safety officers to ensure that when our students return whether in an online way or whether in a in a face-to-face -face way that we're able to have the necessary support systems in place to be able to address any of the challenges that they may face and i want to assure the public that we are well aware of the difficulties that our students are facing but equally we are also well aware of the challenges that some of our teachers have been having as well in coping in the online environment so i look forward to being able to have a further briefing um, later in the week as you know um, 11 plus results will be out shortly and at that time i will be joined by the chief education officer dr ramona archer bradshaw as well as the director of education reform dr ida may denny and we will basically take the country through some of the plans that we have in relation to curriculum changes, in relation to training for our teachers and retooling uh, for our teachers, but also just to give you an insight as to what some of the plans are as we approach the new term and in an online environment.